assistance. Congressman Michael McCall is the ranking member on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Um, what do you what would you expect to see out of this in terms of something that they might be able to agree on or where might they just not be able to at all see eye to eye? Well, I certainly hope the president brings up these um, cyber attacks you know, between uh, the um, uh, uh, what happened with Colonial Pipeline, uh, what happened with uh, solar winds. I think we need to lay a new rules of the road in place, and that would be that there will be consequences to bad behavior. Uh, as Lindsay said, we're going to hit back. Um, I think the president needs to make it very clear to Putin, whether it's a nation state attack or whether it's a sort of Russian organized mafia, which we all know Putin is tacitly approving this, uh, we're not going to tolerate this anymore and that we are prepared to strike back if you do this again. Uh, I mean, enough is enough. I think where they could agree, maybe, uh, Trevor Reed is a Marine in, in Texas, uh, from Texas, and Paul Whalen, a Marine, held hostage uh, in Russia. And I've talked to this, uh, you know, Blinken uh, about this, and I, I hope the president uh, can gain their release and finally bring them home to their families. Let's hope so. That would be progress. Uh, you mentioned cybersecurity, that's on the list. But look at COVID, the Arctic, uh, relations with Beijing, Ukraine, <laughs> Syria, Libya, Afghanistan, the Iran nuclear program. I mean, that, that's, that's a lot in five hours. You know, the list goes on and on. And look, I'm not, at, at, you know, some oppose the meeting at all. I think the meeting was a big victory for Putin. However, uh, my only concern about it was that the fact that President Biden gave so many concessions going into this meeting. Such as what? Uh, and I think the, the there's so many concessions going into the meeting. And I think the biggest one was uh, Nord Stream 2. Uh, Congress, uh, we gave mandatory sanctions on this Putin pipeline going into Europe. And, uh, and the president on his own uh, waived it in the United States national interest, quote unquote. I don't see how it's in the United States national interest to allow Putin to complete this pipeline into Europe where Europe is now going to be uh, energy dependent on Russia. That was a big, uh, a, a big uh, favor for Putin. At the same time, the president shut down the Keystone Pipeline. Uh, and then the Russians attacked uh, the colonial pipeline in the United States. It's, it's a pipeline paradox, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, that's going on and it's not working in our favor. Bill mentioned COVID, and I obviously hope, I'm hoping that these leaders might be able to decide to put some more pressure on China. Uh, Dr. Redfield was on our air yesterday talking about the WHO. He thinks it was compromised. Watch. I think they were highly compromised. Clearly, they were incapable of um, compelling China to adhere to the treaty agreements that they have on global health because they, they didn't do that. Clearly they allowed China to define the, the group of scientists that could come and investigate. That's not consistent with their role. Given that, what should happen now? Well, I had a lengthy discussion with Dr. Redfield. I think he's spot on. He was a CDC director during the pandemic. He was over Fort Detrick. Uh, in his opinion, uh, the, uh, the COVID, the, the virus came out of the lab. And we have a lot of questions about hap what happened with that lab. Uh, you know, but this G7 meeting, they gave once again all the power within the WHO who utterly failed in its mission to warn the world about a global pandemic. And then, you know, General Director Tedros is President Xi's uh, puppet. And uh, I don't think the WHO is the body to investigate this. We need a team of international scientists to go in I don't think China's ever going to let us into that lab. That's a, that's a bad news. But there is evidence coming out today uh, that's more and more confirming uh, yeah. what uh, the, doc, the former CDC director said. And that is that there was a genetic modification at the lab, that the military was at the lab, uh, that um, uh, three of the researchers were hospitalized with COVID-like symptoms in November of 2019. So the more evidence coming out now, more and more points towards the lab. And he's right. The scientific community, including Fauci, condemned any, any thought whatsoever 
any hypothesis they did. that it could possibly come from the lab. Mm -hmm. Congressman McCall, thank you for being thank with you, us sir. this morning. We shall speak again. So thanks so much, David. Uh, ironically, the World Health Organization was founded in Geneva, Switzerland. That's where the headquarters are today. As Good little piece of trivia there. A little bit, right?